This is the theme of Setback and Misery, Nursing as a Setback for Annie, Select Frames. And so um, uh, he's asking for the pills and she said, wait a minute, let me go on ahead and um, do something, go get something or whatever. And he says, um, uh, I want you to, I want the pain to go away. I want my pills, you know, um, I want the pain to go away, go away. Now he doesn't want pills for real. See now, he is using pills to his advantage. She was using pills to solve his uh, physical pain. Then the pills cha the, uh, changed in purpose to solve the emotional pain after she had him to burn his book. Now, from his perspective, the pills can be used to distract her, right? From his really intended goal, okay? Because he's really going to try to use those pills to kind of drug her. So uh, she goes to try to put him back in the bed. And he said, no, I want the pain to go away. I want my pills. And so in some ways, he's affirming and validating the nursing, the nurse in Annie. You know, don't, don't forget you are the answer to my problems. Remember, you are the ones who gave me the pills. Remember? Go get my pills so that I can feel better, remember? And so uh, she's forced to go and step back into her role of nurse. Whereas she wants to remain in this role of being a sort of co-writer for him, right? Without actually writing anything, but just being an inspiration. He's trying to force her back into her setback of being a nurse. Because I think being a nurse for uh, uh, Annie, and I'm saying that now for the first time, that I think that's a setback for her. I don't think that was something that she really wanted to do because if something is a passion for you and you really want to do it, you wouldn't have to kill babies. You wouldn't have to be charged with murder. These were no accidents. These were these were intentional acts that Annie did. And of course, we're going to find out later. But I think nursing was a setback. I think she might have been forced to become a nurse somewhere in her life. Maybe her father told her, maybe her mother expected her, maybe her husband expected her, something like that, I don't know. But you don't sort of trash something you believe is your passion or the thing that you want to do. A lot of times people get into these things because they don't have any other options or they have left themselves without options or they won't choose the proper option. And they try to get something and make it happen and then it always has uh, has an end of the road. It always has a brick wall. I mean, how is it that some people can say they have a passion to be a musician or a rapper or an artist of any kind, and then they end up in jail? How does that happen? Because I would think if something is, is a passion for you, you would do all you could to protect it. You would stay out of trouble. You would not engage the wrong type of person. And all of us can be distracted by the wrong type of people in our lives. And it's not so much it's just the wrong type of people. We are our own distractions. People are not distractions. We create distractions. We are our own distractions, right? People are not in our lives uh, because they force themselves into our lives. They are in our lives because we pull them into our lives. And so I think for Annie, nursing was really a setback, but he's forcing her. She hasn't really had to think about being a nurse, uh, you know, because she's more concerned about creating a writing studio for him so he can bring misery back to life. That's where her focus is. And so when he's asking her, I want you, I want my pills, I want the pain to go away, she say, he's saying, I want you to operate in the um, the position that you're supposed to operate in. I don't want you to operate in another position. Now we're, we're looking at this as a possibility, as a hypothetical, just to sort of examine the theme of setback, right? Uh, but it's not that far fetched because of course he's acting here, he's putting on a face, right? But it has great implications for what he's really trying to push her to do because he doesn't want the writing studio. But it's not as far-fetched to believe that he might need it as a, as an escape, too, at the same time. He can't physically escape the house yet. 
but he might be physically able to escape uh, uh, mentally and psychologically by returning to writing. And so here's where he's saying, I want my pain to go away. And in many cases, he is actually in pain. He may be part acting here, but the pain that that is in his body is still there. There are times that he doesn't really, he's not really triggered by it, but having to crawl um, across the kitchen floor and then try to wheelchair himself back into the room took a lot of effort and energy. So then it, it, um, it brings back that pain that he was feeling. So in many cases, he's actually in physical pain, but I also believe that he's acting. And so Annie is is moved by the fact that Paul needs her. And, you know, even though she's looking at him strangely, uh, receiving what he says, says and being maybe validated by the idea that he still needs her. I also think this face is, is also the type of face that basically suggests I don't really want to go back to that. OK, I'll go get the pills for you. But, I'm, I, you know, I really want to focus on this writing thing and trying to bring back misery and make me happy again. But she'll go on ahead and play along because, after all, that's what she's supposed to do. And so she uh, comes back with uh, water and uh, pills to give to him. He, and he takes the water. Right. And he's going to uh, hide the pills in his mouth. And so then uh, she wheelchairs him back and um, and she says something about I've, I've never been popular because of my temper. And um, and that may speak to some past issues. Right. Because if you have a temper at this age, you had a temper in previous ages, previous seasons of your life. You didn't just all of a sudden get to a part in your life, a point in your life where you have a temp temper. So when she's talking about she's never been popular because of her temper, she's talking about a past issue that she doesn't reveal. She doesn't talk about. She makes these little statements as, as if we're all supposed to know who Annie is. And it's just little mini admissions uh, about her character but we are just left with that statement. And in some ways, we don't even wonder about it anymore. That she makes the statement so quickly as if it's a passing comment. But I think we're supposed to, I think the viewing audience is really supposed to care about it. Why does she have a temper? Why does she blow up the way that she does? Things like that. But the, the um, um, director writer and director don't really reveal it to us so she's helping him in the bed uh helping him really back into his setback the person who now she didn't create the setback she created a subsequent setback for him he created his own setback and not uh checking with the weather reports right and then riding off the road or driving off the road and then when she decided to keep him here keep him there at the house she created that part of his setback but she's essentially helping him right back into his setback back into the bed that is somewhat his prison um and the room that is somewhat his correctional uh, facility right and he's forced to um view the world from that room from that bed from the lens of annie okay and then she off uh she uh, gives him a pen and um, a, a pencil and pad, and she basically says, uh, "This may help you to write, you know." Uh, and then he's like, "I don't, I don't know if I can do that or something like that." And then she's also saying, "Well, use me as your inspiration. I have faith in you, darling." Uh, and then after that, she's gonna throw a kiss, and he's gonna catch it in the air, and then he hides the pill in the bed. So. Uh, she, this is where her mindset is. She hasn't even returned to asking him, okay, how do you feel? Are the pills working? Um, do you need me to do something with your legs? Maybe, maybe massage them, put some oil on them. Do you need me to bring in a heater or anything? She doesn't ask him anything that is related to nursing and nursing him to recovery. She jumps right back into uh, uh, him having inspiration to write misery out of her death, write misery chastain out of her death. That's why I say that face that she gave, 
I don't think that face where he's trying to force her back into her setback of being a nurse, I don't think that face is sympathy for him and his pain. It's, it's, it's more or less, okay, let me just go on ahead and get this done for you because I really want you to return to writing. So here's a pad and pencil, right? Here's a pad and pencil. But then you can look at this from any standpoint that if she's so interested in writing or she's so interested in becoming something or whatever, why doesn't she use the pad and pencil herself? Remember when Buster comes to check the house to see if uh, on, on a suspicion that Paul Sheldon could be there? And she's talking about how, you know, uh, she's talking about her Paul Sheldon collection and how she's been trying to write like Paul. And and um, and she created a writing studio for herself or something like that. And it's her way of trying to usurp Paul's um, abilities uh, in the same way that she did when she was in college and, and then on the job. And so if she's so interested in all these things, why doesn't she take that pencil and pad and begin writing herself. And so then he's kind of, okay, he just got back into the bed and she's pushing this idea so much. Let him rest. She won't even let him rest, right? That's why I say this has become her new goal. She has completely abandoned her uh, mastery orientation. Because remember, when she was nursing him to help at the beginning, after the crash, she had uh, a towel. She was patting his uh, head. Uh, she gave him a pill. She gave him some food. She gave him a number of, uh, she did a number of things as a nurse. She don't even care about that anymore. He's sitting up here sweating in the bed, uh, just tired, in pain, and she wants him to hurry up and write something. So again, her agenda is to um, her agenda is to actually push her own agenda, which is to get him to bring misery Chastain back to life, which really means to bring her misery back so she can be happy. And this is where she throws him a kiss and then he catches it in the air. And so, uh, this is the first time she's really, she's called him, I have faith in you, my darling. And so this is where she's starting to act like a wife even more because if he's he's supposed to be your patient how is he now your darling and so again she has completely changed switched her position switched roles switched her argument that she's no longer going to be the nurse this is her opportunity to do something else beyond being a nurse she doesn't care if he has fully recovered it doesn't matter anymore whether his legs get better, whether his arms get be better, whether his pain subsides, it doesn't matter anymore. All that matters is, is that he needs to write this book and, and, that, and she's gonna make sure he does it by any means necessary. All right, like, subscribe, and visit. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell for more discussions. You can visit my YouTube channel for further film analysis. It's favorites film analysis as the title of the channel. Uh, you can always send me an email and ask me a question, ReginaYFavorites at yahoo.com. My Overcoming Setback, Five Keys for Entering and Exiting Correction book uh, will become available around October 2021. I'm still doing some editing. The book does not focus on film analyses, but I use uh, the content that, that I created for the book to support my um, my perceptions of setback used as a theme in select films. So when the book becomes available, I will send out a notification video audio. Um, thank you very much for visiting the channel.